welcome to Harjit Kaur's Game Tutorials. In few series of videos, we will be learning about evolution of horse. In that course, we will start from classification of modern horse. So in the classification of modern horse, first of all, we have kingdom Animalia, which is why we call multicellular eukaryotic organisms. Next, we have phylum Chordata, possess a notochord, a hollow dorsal nerve cord, and besides this, they have pharyngeal slits, an endostyle, and a post-anal tail. So next we have is class Mammalia, which is the endothermic amniote possessing a neocortex, hairs, three middle ear bones, and mammary glands. In the next order, we have order, which is Perissodactyla. We call it because they are odd-toed ungulates. Next we have is family equity, thick skulled with stocky bones. Further we have the genus, uh, I'm sorry, further we have genus which is equus, only recognized extinct genus in the family equity. So after this now we will discuss about the reason. <laughs> Now it's time for the revision of the classification. So let's start again with the classification of modern horses, kingdom Animalia, multicellular eukaryotic organisms. Next we have phylum Chordata, possess a notochord, a hollow dorsal nerve cord, pharyngeal slits, endostyle, and a post anal tail. Next, we have class Mammalia, endothermic amniote possessing a neocortex, hairs, three middle ear bones, and mammary glands. Next, we have order, which is Perissodactyla, or to ungulates, family equity, thick skulled with stocky bodies. Next, we have genus Equus, only recognized extinct genus in the family Equity. So after this classification of modern horse, we have when and where horses originated. So let's take the answer of this, when and where horses originated. I'm sorry, it's where and when horses originated. The history of horses evolution dates back to Eocene period of Cenozoic era. Eocene period of Cenozoic era. The first known ancestors of horse were dog-sized, dog-sized, living on moist ground and soft leafy vegetation. So we further have his first known fossil of horse from Europe was Heracotherium and next we have is its contemporary fossil of horse from America is Eohippus. Next let's know about the evolutionary trends in horse evolution. So first of all we have changes in limbs, foot posture changes from plantigrade to ungulate. Again from plantigrade to ungulate. So, in this way, in the next step, we have is a reduction in the number of digits from 4 or 5 to 1 in each foot. Next is gradual enlargement and elongation of third digit, perfection of hoof on third digit, development of spring mechanism, length of limbs increased. So, next we have is change in the neck. In the neck, we have elongation of neck, enabling horse for ground grass grazing. Nice tongue twister, it is ground grass grazing. Okay, let's back to elongation of neck. So next is the changes in teeth. High crowns developed on molars and premolars. So there were high crowns. So first of all, we have brachydont dentition, which was replaced by hypsodont dentition. So which is, what is brachydont dentition? That is the low crowned teeth. And whereas, what's the meaning of hypsodont? We have it, high crowned teeth. So these are the changes, main change in the uh, teeth. Next we have is the loss of canines and appearance and increase of diastema and this is the space between incisors and grinding teeth. There's a gap between them. So next we have is changes in brain and skull. 
Increase in size and complexity of cerebral hemispheres and cerebellum, olfactory lobes hidden under cerebrum, preorbital region of skull elongated. Now next we have is horses through through different periods. So for this, let's start with the Eocene period. We will be going through Oligocene, then into Miohip Miocene, then Pliocene and Pleistocene at last. So let's start from the Eocene. In the Eocene we have Heracotherium, which is also called Old World Horse, and Eohippus Dawn Horse, Orohippus a Mountain Horse, and Apihippus. In the Oligocene, we have Mesohippus and Miohippus. Uh, Mesohippus is also called Intermediate Horse. Let's move forward to the horses in Miocene. We have Parahippus and Merichippus, which is also called Ruminant Horse. In Pliocene, we have Hipparion and Pliohippus, also known as Pliocene Horse. In the Pleistocene, we have one and equus. So, I mean to say one and only equus. So, this is the flowchart uh, telling us about the evolution of horse through different periods. In Eocene, Oligocene, Miocene, Pliocene, Pleistocene. In the same way, we have Heracotherium, Eohippus, Orohippus, Apihippus, and Eocene. And in Oligocene, we have Mesohippus and Miohippus. In Miocene, we are having Parahippus, Marichippus. And in this way, uh, it's all about the first part of the videos. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Bye-bye.